good, you guys? It's your boy Raheem the Dream, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Hood Dreams TV. On today's episode, we are going to recap the first ever episode, season one of Chasing Orlando. And if you are new to my channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Also, Jumbo, I'm so happy to have you. Um, after hitting the subscribe button also make sure that you hit the like button and share this video to your social media with all of your friends and family as you guys can see i am outside it's a beautiful day today so i decided let's get on the balcony and you know shoot this recap um so let's go ahead and get right into it um we start off the season um being introduced to every cast member and we start off also if it gets too loud guys it's because cars are driving by and everything you know sorry about that i'll try to speak loud when a car drives by but we start off getting introduced to chef pablo we also have airplanes driving by is you know flying by as well so i'll try to speak a little louder but uh, we we start off getting introduced to Chef Pablo. Um, he states that he is a father of three, so he has three children, and he loves to cook. He's a chef. Um, let me see. And in this first scene, he goes to visit his mom, who um, he states has had cancer, I believe, three times. Um, and he talks about how he had to quit being like the chef so that he can be there for his mom and i think that is very commendable um sometimes especially when you're the oldest child and i don't know if he stated that he's the oldest child if he's the only child or whatnot but a lot of times children we have to sacrifice our dreams so that we can help our elderly or sick parents um and so i find that very commendable and i'm glad that Things have turned around to where he's now in a position to where he can go back after his dreams. And hey, you're on chase in Orlando now. So, you know, congratulations to him. And he's talking with his mom and they're just, you know, making small chat. Um, he's talking to her about throwing his third annual puff and paint party. That puff puff, you know what I'm talking about. That little <laughs> okay um but that sounds really cool um next we meet devin um he says that he is a luxury realtor and he's taking pictures of the home videos of a home that um he's in and um you know that he can you know send these pictures or these videos to a potential new homeowner or home buyer, I'm sorry about that. Um, and while he's there taking his pictures and his videos and everything, he contacts Lauren England. If you guys know Lauren, she's been on the Chasing franchise for the beginning, really. Um, and so um, he's friends with her. He was also on her show called Just Lauren. Um, and so they're just catching up. He shows her, um, you know, he's on FaceTime with her and he's just showing her the house and everything. Um, she also told Devin that currently what's going on with her is that she has been doing music and okay, uh, I would like to hear this music. So definitely going to have to go put, um, definitely going to have to, um, what's the, the notification bell on Lauren. So when she posts, I'll be notified. But um, let me see what else. Uh, she also told me, she also said in the uh, clip that she also has went to Africa to pursue music. And I'm like, dang, all the way to Africa? But hey, that means we're going to hear this African vibe in the music. And so I would love to hear that because you know Beyonce did that in um, Who Run the World, Girls. So, okay, let's see, you know, what going to Africa sounds like in your music. Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, Devin also tells us that he is from Alabama, but he moved to Florida. 
um, and that's uh, Alabama is is where all his friends and family and everyone is still back at home. Um, he states that it's been a little bit of a struggle uh, with his real estate business, and he doesn't really know anyone in town uh, down uh, in uh, Orlando. Um, and when he told me that he had moved, what? No, I keep saying when he told me or she told me. Y'all didn't tell me. I'm actually watching it on the damn TV. So, uh, but when he said that he had uh, like relocated to Orlando from Alabama, I immediately thought I was like, so I wonder if he relocated for the show. Or if he had already moved to Orlando and then the show was presented to him. Um, but that's just something you guys in the comment. If you are presented the opportunity to be on a TV show or a web series or anything and it's in another state. And from what I know or what I've heard, they don't get paid on these on chasing. I heard that they don't get paid. Um, but knowing that they don't get paid is, is the move worth it? Because essentially you're getting clout from the show, but not money. Now I could be wrong. They may get paid, but I've heard from several people that there is no money. But, uh, yeah, just comment below and let me know if, if you're getting clout versus money, is that enough for you to move from one state to another? Yeah, just let me know. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Next, we go to Cali Boy, and whoa, he seems like he's going to be a little bit of a lot to have to deal with. Um, he says that he's a house father and a makeup artist, and from the, the looks of his makeup work and being a house father, it seems like he's very successful in both worlds. Um, he says that he's, you know, done some of the biggest campaigns that you can think of and working with all these top brands and, and also when it comes to, uh, like the ballroom scene, seems like, you know, everything's 10, 10, 10 across the board. So, okay. Um, let me see. Let me see. Mm. He did state that with Ballroom, he joined not that long ago. And he lost his very first ever ball, but he's never lost another ball since. So he's only lost one. And when he said that, I could relate because that reminded me of like middle school and high school when I joined the wrestling team. I lost my very first ever wrestling match in middle school. And it was my very first ever match, not the little school bus around by y'all, but it, yeah, it was my first ever um, wrestling match. And after that first one, I played no games with nobody else. Won every single match after that. Never lost another match. Um, let me see, let me see. But this ain't about me. We're going to keep going. Um, let me see. So, uh, Cali Boy is, um, on, like, Uvu or Skype or he's on some type of web chat, FaceTime chat on this computer. And he's talking to Gardini. And, um, you guys probably know him as Rick Rosa, but he goes by both. Um... What's his name? Uh, Cali Boy, he's explaining to us how he knows Rick Rosa. Um, and he's just explaining that, he's just explaining that uh, he knows him because when, He knows him because um, there was a point in his life where he felt like, you know, unalive in himself and Rick Rosa was there for him to be like a shoulder to cry on, to vent to, stuff like that. Um, let me see. 
see, let me see, let me see. He also told us how his stepfather uh, had cancer and had beat the cancer. And then he's also talking about um, how his stepfather went into a coma and never woke back up. Um, let me see, let me see. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll just end it like that with Cali Boy. But I just thought it was very commendable to like, especially for the first episode, to sh tell us who you are and, and what you're all about and everything. Um, I feel like he gave us the whole backstory that we need to know um, as far uh, as far as like finding out who Cali Boy is and, you know, uh, but we'll move on to the next one. Uh, let me see. Next, we meet B Baby Lindo, um, who introduces himself as Orlando's uh, finest dancer. And uh, so he's a stripper. And, you know, he's just doing little strip moves on the camera. And, you know, looks like he's a stripper. I mean, what else can you say about that? He's a stripper. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Um, and so next we go to Ayo, A-Y-O. Um, and I initially, when he came on the screen, I thought he was a rapper, but he's not a rapper. He is a performer and a, a, I think like a lip sync performer. You know, like how drag queens lip sync and stuff. They dress up and, and lip sync. That's essentially what he does, but he's not dressing in drag. He's still dressing as, you know, a man and and doing the lip sync performances it, and you know getting like club uh, appearances and stuff like that and his outfit fire he had on like this light blue outfit uh with like this sparkly mask and it was fire it was definitely fire um and then he starts singing well lip syncing to um yours mine ours i don't know what the, the title of the song is called but uh, by Mooney Long. Um, but yeah, so after his performance, um, he goes outside and um, he goes outside with B-Baby and they're just chatting about the Puff and Paint party that's coming up. And uh, let me see. B baby says that he's not going to be able to make it because he has another engagement. I can respect it because he's booked and busy. He's been paid to go do an appearance somewhere else. I definitely can fuck with that. Uh, and then next we get to meet Remini. Remini, I'm sorry. Remini. And he is a drag uh, queen. Let's see. And says that by day he works with kids and adults that have intellectual disabilities and by night um, she's a drag drag performer uh, let me see let me see okay uh, Remini starts to do uh, a performance the performance looked like it went really well um, and just seems like he has a nice fan base people that actually like really F with him her because when you're in drag i guess her um also really pretty really pretty in and out of drag um let me see and so after the performance uh she goes outside and she sits down with one of her friends and her boyfriend um they're outside talking and they also start talk, talking about the puff and paint party that she's going to go to. Um, she says that she's not going to be puffing, but she will be painting. Um, and she also talks about her relationship. She says that they met on Tinder. Um, she had to explain to her boyfriend, like, look, I'm a drag queen. So if that's not something that you're into, then, you know, next. But he was in it. I mean, he was into it and they're together now and i think that was so cute also they are interracial uh rem and i uh is black her partner is white and you know i love that uh let me see let me see 
Next, we meet Max Anthony Cortez, who is the CEO and boss and an esthetician of his own esthetician business. Um, he says that um, some things happen to where he now has to do his services from his apartment. And he used to have a spa, but like I said, some things happened and now he's no longer in a spa. He's actually doing his services from his home. And when I heard that, I know a lot of people might try to shade him or they may have something bad to say about that. But I think people who are estheticians, all right, love you back. My babe's leaving. Um, love you too. Um, I think people who are estheticians or you do services similar to that, I think it's quite great for you to, you know, work from work from home. You don't have to be uh, paying for two different rents, especially when you're paying rent where you live at. And then you have to pay booth rent at a salon or a spa or anything like that. And so now you're paying two rents. When if especially if like you have like a two or three bedroom and you live alone, just take one of your bedrooms and make that your your room that you are servicing your clients out of, whether they're coming to get their nails done or whether they're coming to get facials or, or anything hair like why pay another rent in another building or booth rent in another building when you have an extra bedroom? You know, save that money. That's an extra thousand dollars per month or more, depending on how much you pay. Do that shit at home. Do that shit at home. Nobody, your clients are not going to care as long as the finished results are immaculate, perfect. They're not going to care where they're coming to get it done at. They may want. You know, they might prefer for it to be in a salon or something, but there's a lot of clients who are not going to care. They just want the service. And so I see nothing wrong with him, you know, working out of his home. I would if I was in that same predicament. I would do the same thing. Um, Let me see. Hmm. Next, we... No, we don't meet. Let's see. Next, Devin goes to visit Max at his apartment. And he's getting, like, some kind of facial. And they're meeting for the first time in person. Um, but they were already friends on social media. So, they're meeting for the first time in person. And while, um, while they're, you know, meeting and connecting for the first time, they... Devin is getting a facial. And so I really loved that Max, he was actually like all about um, like the business first because they were they were about to start like drinking and stuff. And Max is like, okay, before we start drinking, let me, you know, take care of the business first um, and get this facial on up out the way. So I like Max. Um, and then next uh, we jump to the puff and paint party. And Pablo, he says that he was at the party early, but then he left. And when he came back to the party, it had already started. So he came back to the party late after it was already started. Um, and Ayo, he gets to the party. And I guess he's looking for Pablo and Pablo's not there. Um... But clearly, AO is not on black people time. You know, it's a whole thing in a black community about uh, colored people time. He's on time. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Devin arrives to the party after AO and Max. Um, let me see. Also, Devin thinks that Pablo is handsome. And he is. He is. Um... Let me see. We also meet Marley J. We're introduced to Marley J, who says that he is a rapper. And we didn't really get to see too much of him on this episode, so maybe we'll we'll get to see more um, of him. I'm sure we will in you know another episode. But he comes in and he just seems like he's pretty, you know, just reserved and 
if the mess doesn't involve him, he's just gonna be over here in the corner. And I, look, I, I fucks with it. Um, let me see, let me see. And then lastly, uh, what's his name? Cali Boy comes to the Puff and Paint party. And he comes in when Max and the rest of the guys, they're sitting at the table and they're talking. And he came in on a conversation that they were having where um, Max, um, he was like, he's not from Orlando. And um, Cali Boy's like, well, what's wrong with Orlando? And so it kind of seemed like Cali Boy kind of sort of poked the bear a little bit because I don't know. It was really just a big misunderstanding, but they kind of got into it because Max is like, who are you? Like, and you just jumping into conversation, trying to like have issues with me and you're, you only heard a little bit. And so I guess Kelly, Bo Kelly boy thought that Max was like talking crap about Orlando and Max is like, I wasn't talking crap about Orlando. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of, they, they just started arguing. They really started arguing. And I would have been so embarrassed sitting at that table if I was one of the other guys that wasn't in the argument. I would have been so embarrassed. I'm like, this is literally the first episode and these guys don't know each other and they're arguing. Why am I here? Why am I a part of this? And a couple of them actually got up and walked away and that would have been me too. But, um... From what I can tell, Max and Kelly Boy are going to definitely be very outspoken. They are not going to take any shit from anybody. And I can't wait to see how the rest of the season is going to pan out. Also, I want to add this into the video because I almost forgot to say this. But the part where Max um, and Kelly Boy was arguing... They did mention age. Kelly Boy said that he was 41 years old. And I think Max is probably like early 20s. I can't remember if Max gave his age or not, but he's giving early 20s. Like, can't be any older than like 25. And Kelly Boy is 41. Hmm. So that actually kind of makes me cringe a little bit, knowing that... Let me move my hand out the way. Knowing that you are 41 and you're arguing with this young boy in his 20s. We're going to say 20s. And if he ain't in his 20s, then the baby look good. Because he still looks like a teenager to me. He look like he's like 22, 23. But definitely no older than 25. And I just can't see a 41-year-old arguing with somebody who's so much more younger than them. But... Definitely a cringe-worthy moment. That's all. I just wanted to add that two cents in. All right, bye-bye. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Um, I do think that this whole cast is going to be so refreshing. Um, everybody's bringing something different, and we just want to see everybody's, you know, careers just blossom and to the point where they can all just start, I guess, getting rich and their followers going up from this show and everything. So, but if you enjoyed my recap, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Also make sure that you hit the like button and share this video to your social media with all of your friends and family. But until the next video, oh, also, I am on a web series as well. It's gonna be similar to like Chasing, but it's called On The Rise Charlotte, and it's under the Blue Light TV umbrella, which is our production company. And it's ran by Justine Lindsay, who was the first trans football cheerleader. Um, she's on the Panthers Top Cats and she's our CEO. Um, the show will be coming out September 25th, which is a Wednesday at 9 p.m., 8 p.m., what was it called, Central Time, uh, Eastern Time, I'm sorry about that. Um, so I will be giving you guys more details as the show comes out. This, it's, the show actually got pushed back because it was supposed to come out on August the 14th, but there were still some things going on with production and editing. So it's been pushed back now to September 25th. 
on the ride charlotte um you guys can go to my instagram page to try to find me or to try to find it or if you need help finding it so you can go follow the page i'll definitely be happy to send that information to you but on the rise charlotte you guys make sure that you go and subscribe to our youtube page as well the youtube page is up and also um follow our ig page um but until the next video it is your boy raheem the dream and thank you so much for watching another episode of hood dreams tv you guys have a good one talk to you next time <laughs> Take it, take it I don't wanna take no more